AI allows you to quickly create a mask of the sky, the background or objects. It can also locate people and then create masks of just the skin, hair or clothing. It's pretty amazing. So let me show you how it works. So with this photograph, what I want to do is just make it a bit more vibrant and I'm not really happy with the magenta cast in the clouds. So I'm going to create a couple of masks um, just to fix that problem. This building here is the very famous Liver building in Liverpool and it's looking a bit dull and a bit contrasty. So I want to sort of have a little look at that and the water as well, the River Mersey. I just want to sort of change the colour slightly. So let's jump in then and the first thing I'm going to do is just select the sky. So I'm going to let AI do that for me. And there you go, it's done a pretty good job. And um, it may well have taken some of the building as well. So I'm just going to subtract from that with a brush. I'm going to turn the auto mask off and I'm just going to... It's mainly the clock that I'm interested in there. That, that's fine for me. So what I want to do is take some of the highlights down first. So let's just remove some of the highlights and then we're going to change the color. So I'm going to cool the sky. Let's go to round about there, I think. And then the tint as well. So I'm just changing the color of the sky slightly to what I think looks better. Something like that. I'm going to increase the saturation as well a fair bit. So I'm kind of happy with that color, but what I'm going to do now is come down to the bottom and I'm just going to adjust the texture and make those clouds a bit softer. So round about there and the dehaze as well. I'm just going to dehaze it slightly um, to, let's see, round about, I'm just doing, oh, there you go. So I kind of like that. So let's look at a before so that's the way it looked before I made the adjustments and that's the way it looks now. And I think the sky looks a lot better, doesn't it? So the next thing to look at then is the buildings. But first of all, let's rename the layer. So to select the buildings, I'm going to create a new mask and I'm going to go for this option here, which is select objects. And when I do that, I'll have this brush on the end of the mouse. And the buildings that I'm interested in are these guys here. So let me just make a selection and see what AI makes of this. So sort of round about there should do it. So I'm just clicking and dragging and painting over that area. And then when I let it go, let's see what happens. And that's ideal. That's exactly what I wanted. So what I want to do is then I want to sort of brighten that area and just have a little look at the colors. So I'm going to come up here and I'm going to lift the shadows. So just a touch up to round about, round about there should do it. And then I want to boost the saturation. I think round about there. And then I'm going to drop the contrast, which will take away that sort of harshness because I think it's just a little bit too harsh. So saws around about there. And that looks quite good. So let's see it before and after. So that's what it did look like. And it's kind of darkish, isn't it? And a bit gloomy. And then just with that little adjustment, it's just brightened that whole area up, hasn't it? And that looks really good. So let's rename this. Okay, and the next thing to do then is the water. So we need to create a new mask for that. So the one I'm going to go for here then is the linear gradient. And then I'm going to come across into the image and place the crosshair roughly here and then drag upwards. And then if I put my finger on the shift key as I do it, it will make sure that that line stays completely horizontal. So now I've got a selection made of the water. I just want to make some adjustments then. And again, I'm going to take the highlights down. I think because they were just a little bit too bright. Then I need to change the color a bit. Um, let's see, let's take the temperature down to something that looks a bit bluer, maybe something round about there. And then the tint as well, so we can add a bit more green into it. 
uh, don't add too much maybe roughly there and uh, the clarity I'm just going to soften that as well around about there let's just soften the water a little bit so all those little peaks of the waves all looked a little bit too sharp to me so that kind of completes the edit of that now it wasn't drastic but if I come up here then and we have a look and I switch all the masks off so that's the way the image started then and it's kind of I don't know I didn't like that magenta cast in the clouds like I mentioned and uh, the main sort of subject of this shot is the liver buildings and they look a bit dull and just brightening everything up and adding a bit of vibrance in selected areas it looks like that and it looks so much better doesn't it so I can just put that tool away and that's that one done so in that example you got to see a couple of extra ways to create masks the sky and uh, the linear gradient for instance and the object selection as well so have a little go on one of your photographs and let's jump on to the next one so this is a photograph I captured in my studio and what I want to fix on it is the dark area on this side of the face and possibly a couple of other adjustments but let's start there so Lightroom AI has already detected that there's a person in the shot and if I mouse over this little icon you can see it's done a great job of doing that however I don't want all of Stephen I just need part of the face so if I click on the little icon it will split the areas up into separate little masks that I can create which is quite funny isn't it but the one I'm interested in is facial skin so I'm going to click on that and then I just simply need to click here to create the mask so now I'm ready to make the adjustments so I'm going to lift the shadows and as I drag it you'll see his face becoming brighter and I think roughly round about there should do it now I also want to change the color of the skin as well and to do that I'm going to use the tint and I'm just going to take it away from being too red basically and I'm just going to drop it to round about sort of round about there uh, and the saturation as well I'm just going to drop that but not by much just a little bit because it's a little bit too saturated so that's quite good now I'm going to soften the skin now and to do that I'm going to come down here and I'm going to drop the texture and I'm going to drop that until it looks quite good let's see round about there looks quite nice uh, and the clarity as well I'm going to try and just take some of the clarity out as well so sort of round about there should do it and that looks really good doesn't it so we have a look at a before and after so that's what it did look like and he's in the shadows and that's what it looks like now it's so much better isn't it so I'm going to create a new mask and I'm going to select people again then click on the little icon and what I want to do is is just select the whites of the eyes so I'm going to click on here and then create mask now I don't want both eyes I just want the one so I'm going to subtract from that with a brush and um, just get rid of that there so we just want that eye in and then all I'm going to do is lift the exposure just on that side and only a bit you can go really silly you don't want it to match the other side because it's still you know in the shadow so I think somewhere around about there should do it and it's only subtle but I think that works so that's that one done so the next thing I want to look at then is the hair so I need to create a new mask and select people again click on the little icon and this time I'm going to go for hair which is just here and then click on create mask and what I want to do here then is just lighten the hair slightly so the exposure I'm going to take up a little bit so not too much just back that off a little bit let's see round about there and then just maybe lift the shadows up a little bit as well let's have a look not too much maybe around about there and that should do it so that's that one done uh, and I say it's only subtle but it all adds to it so it'll be before and after on that you can see it just looks so much better doesn't it 
The last thing I'm going to do is because this area on this side is in shadow, I'm going to put a linear gradient here and just darken this side. So let's do that then. So create a new mask, go for a linear gradient and then click about here and then just drag to the left. If I put my finger on the shift key, it's going to constrain it to a vertical line. And then I'm going to drop the exposure in that area to round about. Let's try about one, somewhere around about there. Now it looks really harsh, doesn't it? So what I'm going to do is come over here, bottom left hand, and where it says show edit pins, I'm going to put on always just for now so you can see. So we have the line where the gradient ends and the other two lines are where the graduation takes place. So I can make that graduation a lot smoother. So if I just come over here and I'm just going to put this to auto and that just means when I mouse out of the image over here, they'll disappear. So how does that look? I think there might be a bit too much shadow on Stephen's face. So I can just pull that across uh, and maybe it needs to be graduated a bit more and pulled across a bit more. Let's see. That's looking good, isn't it? So I'm happy with that. And that kind of a completes that sort of edit. I'm just going to turn the pins off and then put the tool away. And let's see a before and after then. So the whole thing started off looking like that. And then it now looks like that. The last thing I'm going to do on this then is just to put in a bit of grain. Um, now, not too much. And maybe just soften that grain down a bit. And there you go, that's that's the completed version. And as I said, that was the before and that's the after. It's only subtle, isn't it? But it makes a huge difference, those little changes. And you find when you edit photographs, those little changes um, all add up to me the difference between a photograph that you don't like and then one that you do. Okay, so one more photograph to edit and I will do that in the next module. So I'll see you shortly.